Hey friends, today is a quick Q&A video. We received some great questions that I think might be interesting to many other tea lovers. So let's get started. First, Seth asked, is it better to leave the lid on the top of the guy wine between brewings? I heard that it's better to leave the top off when it's not brewing to maintain more flavors and to have more brewings. It's a great question. And I think uh, I've heard other tea lovers have this similar uh, wondering. My habit is always to put the lid on top of the guy one because I found uh, sometimes uh, if I'm a, a tea table brewing, it's one session, so I wouldn't let the guy one set for long, but sometimes I might walk away and come back a couple of hours later. I find if I forget to put the lid on, I can taste the oxidized flavor of the tea, which I don't like. And by just simply put the lid on the guy one seems to eliminate that issue. So I think my primary reason for having the lid always on the guy one is to prevent that oxidation. And at the same time, it also keep the dust away. So I'm also thinking why it's better to leave the lid off when you're not brewing to maintain more flavors and have more brewing. I'm, I, personally, I feel like it's counterintuitive for me, especially to have more flavors. If you leave the lid off, doesn't that give the tea more, uh, the aroma of the tea more chances to escape? And uh, I'm, I'm just not sure why uh, and have more brewing. Why would the lid off would have more <laughs> brewing? I guess overall, um, I know why my preference and why my reason to do it. And this claim seemed very interesting to me and I'd like to know more. If you also heard this, uh, this way to handle the guy one lid and uh, you know the explanation behind it, I'd love to know. Another great question that I received five months ago, I didn't know. It's weird the other day that YouTube reminded me because somebody replied to this uh, comment. Anyway, so uh, D Panther1526 asked, thank you for this video. I wanted to ask, what are the telltale, tell, telltale, telltale signs of a fake easing compared to a real one? Well, um, <laughs> it's, I, I cannot think of any, maybe one that's remotely as a sign is the price. When it's overly low, it just cannot be a real easing. First of all, I want to say the prices of easing is not about high price. You don't have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to get one real one. Uh, but if you are looking at a $20 Yixin Zisha teapot, the chance is slim. There's an exchange rate. If you change that to the exchange uh, to the renminbi, it's around to say 100-ish, uh, you know, and that includes the profit for the retailer, the shipping from China, and all that materials and the make and the market of Yixin is just, it's really you can get a real one at that kind of a price point. So the only thing that I think it can be a hard pass is the overly cheap teapot. Sometimes you might hear people talk about, you gotta hear the sound of Yixin, you got to hear the, 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 the connection point. Those, if we're talking about the clay itself, those are not really the sun. And nowadays to make our counterfeit easing, people try a lot. So I really cannot say if you hear a certain sound, it's not easing, or this is a certain sound confirms it's an easing teapot or a material, if you see any little uh, connection points or lines, it confirms it's easing. It's, uh, 
it's rather complicated. And let's take one step back to look at this question. Uh, and this is why I think this is such a great question is a fake yixing. The I think there are many layers to this question is what is a fake yixing? Are we talking about the material that is a fake? And I think that could be what most people are thinking about, as I mentioned in uh, previous videos, that a lot of plants in the West, when we talk about Yixin Zisha tea pot, we only talk about clay. But that's, that's not something that's overly rare. And on the other hand, when we talk about Yixin and fake Yixin, somebody is referring this to the original uh, mine that those are the real easing and all the other ones are not real easing. And that's open to discussion to different people might have different standards. Then another layer of easing, which get that to this collector, those uh, really expensive level of easing is, are they really made by some masters or aged like antique eating teapot then that is another category of eating that oftentimes you see a lot of fakes and stuff so i guess what i'm trying to say is a a simple question when we talk about eating fake real what exactly are we talking about what is real in your book if what you're looking for is the real Yixin clay as real and the fake is uh, made with mud and stuff like that. I don't think it's, um, you don't have to concern too much because the clay itself is not overly um, rare and you can find that with a decent price from a trusted vendor. Just at that level, I don't think there's much concern about fake. Just don't buy those ultra cheap five ten dollars teapot and it, I just the chance of it's a real easing clay material is very slim. Did I explain as well? Maybe a little bit uh, twisty but uh, let me know if there's further questions and um, help me out if I didn't make things very clear to you. Well it's a wrap for today's video. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and the uh, notification bell. Hope to see you soon. Keep steeping.